Now's the time on Sprockets when we dance. <laughs> have on Sprockets. Our guest has been Jimmy Stewart. My name is Dieter. Auf Wiedersehen. Hey, everybody. Been a while. Just been really busy. And it's hard for me to make videos uh, during the summer. I've, I've learned that. We just got a lot going on with the kids and they're always around and even though I've recorded some videos with them, that's been kind of more intentional and uh, I just generally don't like to record with the family around. So, uh, but they're all at the pool right now. So I thought I'd get this one in while I can. I'm way behind on these top tens. Here we are, 1976. To me, 1976 is a bit of a dud year. From top to bottom, I mean, you know, just the overall output just not that great. Rock had become really stale. So there are a lot of bands that people really like that I just don't. Uh, like Boston, Bad Company, even bands that I should probably like more, like Rush. Um, just, just never been, just never connected with them that much. I like individual songs. My son's really into Queen lately. A Day of the Races is a decent album. Again, Queen is just another band that more just kind of like individual songs. I've just never really connected with complete albums. So punk was really needed at this moment. And we'll get a slight taste of that in this list. Uh, but it, you're going to see a lot of punk moving forward uh, from here, uh, at least through the 70s and the early 80s. Um, I've got some interesting picks here. Uh, because I kind of had to to make a to make a, a good top ten, but this is a pretty typical one. Desire by Bob Dylan, an incredible follow up to a masterpiece of an album. I mean, to follow up Blood on the Tracks with this, it sounds incredibly different from Blood on the Tracks. The guitar tone, in particular, is quite unique. Actually, within the the entire within his entire discography it's it's a quite a unique guitar tone but obviously the classic song hurricane is one of the great openers of all time on any album um and yeah just a solid solid album um i think my sister says that this is her favorite dylan album actually okay number nine we have an album that um Months ago, wouldn't have even been in my collection, and now I have it in my top 10 for 1976. And that's the album uh, Amir by Henri Texier, uh, the French uh, double bassist. I was on a dig in Greenville with Eric Weinbender and uh, Dave, and we were at a record store there, and this was in the used bins. This is a reissue from 2018, I believe. I was familiar with the name and I thought about, I was like, hey, I should, should I pick this up? And Dave was like, get it. That's Fred's avatar, man. That's Fred's avatar. <laughs> Big Star 1000's avatar, of course. So I, um, I picked it up and I'm so glad that I did. Uh, it's just an absolutely brilliant, brilliant album. Uh, the instrumentation, incredibly unique. The arrangement's incredibly unique. Nothing really sounds like this. Um, his wordless vocals, the kind of da di da 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 the, you know, the <laughs> thing that goes on throughout is amazing. To me, it's a very um, spiritual album. Um, it's got a, a very spiritual uh, jazz feeling to it. I don't even, I even hate to say jazz, you know, it's, it's just a very spiritual album and, and nothing like this. And I'm so glad that I picked it up. I've been listening to it a lot since I grabbed it and, um, I had to get it in uh, my top 10 for 1976 at number nine. Now, this is another one that I discovered, uh, through the vinyl community, but not on YouTube, on Instagram, Midnight Ryan actually showed this album and uh, the samples just blew me away. And I found this reissue, El Reloge, I 
think that's how you say it. Argentinian band, definitely leans prog, but really heavy at times. Um, but also some really beautiful moments, uh, some classical guitar thrown in there on occasion, um, very kind of atmospheric uh, keys and organ at times. Uh, the Rev mentioned this recently in a, in a video that he talked about, and I was all prepared to, to kind of talk in the same vein about this album. And I'm not a big prog guy. I've never been a big prog guy. And a lot of it is because I just don't connect with it emotionally. I listen to a lot of bands like, you know, take Yes, for instance, and I just feel kind of, I feel nothing. I make, I make absolutely no emotional connection with that music. And I'm not saying that if others do, that they're wrong. You know, we can't control that. Just for me, it's never been there. And as much as I can marvel at their technical precision and their arrangements and their abilities as musicians, um, I, just, I just don't feel anything. And this is a much rawer album than anything you would ever find by a band like Yes, or in most prog bands uh, from the 70s. To me, this is a band that I feel like plays more with their heart and less with their head. And, and that's why I, I, really, I really connect with this. And then I can also get into all the crazy time changes and whatever else in the ripping guitar solos. But man, some of the heavy moments on this are so proto-metal. This is a brilliant album, and if you've never heard it, I highly suggest it. At number seven, I have Whiskey Before Breakfast by Norman Blake, uh, the incredibly talented flat picker, as my, my good buddy Elliot, fellow North Carolinian, would say, it's not bluegrass, it's acoustic music, and that is very true. Uh, this is on Rounder, one of the few Rounder originals that I have, and I wish that I had more. Just two guitars. Uh, the other guitarist is Charlie Collins. A uh, number of instrumentals, but also um, a few vocals here and there. Just a brilliant, brilliant record. And I would say a fine entry point into this music um, if it's something that you've never really explored. Rustic, and rootsy, um, but just incredibly honest. At uh, number six, I have Africa, Brazil. The Brazilian, great. Um, with quite a shift in style for this album, uh, getting really funky um, and bringing in more um, American kind of soul and funk influence into his music. Um, leaning more on the electric guitar. At times it still has that kind of MPB sound, but uh, but just a lot funkier and grimier and uh, just an absolutely brilliant album. Most people should know this one. I mean, you know, this is the Vinyl Me Please reissue, so if they didn't, they probably do now, but uh, yeah. But the next five are all uh, much more kind of typical picks, I think. And I think anybody would have these five, at least four of these five in their top 10 for 1976. And number five, uh, Station to Station uh, by David Bowie. You know, with songs like uh, Word on a Wing and Wild as the Wind, um, not my favorite parts of, of this record. Uh, much prefer uh, the, the title track, Golden Years, uh, TVC 15 and Stay Though, or Where It's At. Those two songs, absolutely amazing, and pretty much make the whole album. But uh, I'm a little bit more forgiving to those two uh, songs that I don't like as much. They're fine songs, but they're just not, uh, not my favorite things from David Bowie. But this is a remarkable album, uh, simply for the other four. It would be weird to call this a transitional album. I've seen people call it that before, um, but... Bowie was always transitioning, right? I mean, every from every album to the next, it was a transition. Uh, and that's what made him so great, right? I would say number two, number three, and number four, you could kind of like swap their order around. Um, so I'll just, you know, 
but just to be official. At number four, I, I have the Ramones debut from 1976. Obviously, uh, an album that is probably more important. No, it's it's just as great as it is important. Uh, I'm not gonna not gonna do that. But for me personally, not my favorite Ramones album. Uh, slotted in at number two for one that I'll mention later. But uh, I still, I mean, how can how can you not love this album? Um, I mean, just the, the the first four tracks from Blitzkrieg Bop to Beat on the Brat to Judy is a Punk to I Want to Be Your Boyfriend. But this this band was so needed at the time to, to harp on 1976 again and how stale and just awful uh, in general, like rock music had become. Uh, it needed something. It needed, uh, we needed another rebellion. And that's where the Ramones come in. One of the great American bands, um, arguably, I, I wouldn't have a problem with anybody saying that this is the greatest American rock and roll band. Uh, I don't agree. I don't put them there personally, but uh, definitely a top three greatest American bands of all time. And please do not be offended that I have it at number four. I'm just getting a little bit more um, personal with the ranking uh, for this top ten. Uh, I would put this slightly above it, uh, The Modern Lovers. With Jonathan Richman, I've talked about this album because it was in my uh, top 200. In fact, it was my 200th favorite album, and I got a lot of shit for that. <laughs> um, uh, but this is one of my all-time favorites. Um, when I heard this, it was like hearing a, a new album, you know? This was an album that I could put on, and I felt like I was truly hearing something new, and I didn't have to place myself in the context of the time that it came out. Um, it's incredibly unique and its own thing. And that's all due to, to Jonathan Richman, the character of Jonathan Richman. Uh, I said this when I talked about it in my top 200, but Jonathan Richman would never really sound like this again. And uh, I think that what he would go on to do uh, was probably even more punk than this. Uh, but this is a brilliant album that owes a lot. It kind of just continues the legacy of the Velvet Underground and would inspire countless number of indie bands into the late 80s and the early 90s. And I'm going to catch a lot of shit for putting this album above those two. <laughs> but, you know, um, going with Jailbreak by Thin Lizzy. Uh, one of the great hard rock bands of all time, Phil Lynott. Absolutely amazing. Uh, those double lead guitars, uh, signature sound. This is still my favorite Thin Lizzy album. It's the first one that I ever heard. And I know it's not as cool to say that this is their best or your favorite Thin Lizzy album. Uh, you know, Johnny the Fox, uh, actually, which I should have and probably would be in my top 10. I just don't have it. Uh, I don't even have a CD of that album. I used to, and I don't know why. Um, but that's a great album, and I still stream it a good bit. In fact, I did just a couple weeks ago. Uh, the opening title track, uh, Angel from the Coast, um, Warriors, uh, Cowboy Song, are, are just kind of that classic Thin Lizzy sound. But then you get kind of the infusion of R&B and songs like Running Back. It's one of my favorite. Running Back is so simple, but it's one of my favorite uh, Thin Lizzy tunes. Um, of course, the boys are back in town. It was a big hit. And I think that's why a lot of people knock this album because they get tired of hearing that over and over and over again. Uh, Fight or Fall, brilliant. But then the closer, Emerald, <laughs> I mean, just blows me away every single time I hear it. Uh, Jailbreak by Thin Lizzy is definitely one of the best 10 albums of 1976. And I have it at number two. And so number one would be obvious um, songs in the key of life by Stevie Wonder, uh, easily a top 25 album for me. You know what I love to do with this record? I like to just throw on a side and just play one side and then just kind of put it back on the shelf. And I feel like I, in playing it that way, I actually have gotten to know it better than I, than I used to 
um, even when I, I discovered it at a much younger age, I mean, when I was in my teens, I list, would listen to it on CD, but it was so long that you'd have to be on a pretty wrong, a pretty long road trip, you know, to get through it in one sitting. And, and so now I, I, yeah, I just like to kind of throw it on and just listen to one side and then put it back on the shelf for a little while. Every, I mean, everybody knows this record, um, and the, the incredible hits that are on it. Isn't she lovely? Uh, I wish Sir Duke, Sir Duke's one of the great R and B songs. One of the great songs, the seventies was a, uh, for, for many years, a singer songwriter decade. And I feel like Stevie Wonder was one of the true great songwriters of the 1970s. And sometimes soul artists, R&B artists, don't really get that type of recognition, you know? Curtis Mayfield, Marvin Gaye, you know? But the guys that wrote the hits for the, for the artists in the 60s, um, and into the 70s seem to get more credit than the artists do. And I feel with Stevie, you got the whole package. So not only was he an incredible vocalist, an incredible musician and arranger, but I think he was a great just songwriter in general. And uh, this is a lot of a lot of proof of that. Uh, Love's in Need of Love Today. Just amazing opening song. Beautiful, just beautiful. But anyway, Songs in the Key of Life. Easily the best album in 1976. And uh, no argument. Not even accepting your arguments on that. Sorry. Yeah, feeling kind of weird and goofy. Haven't done this in a while. So anyway, I'm going to try and get the next ones out faster. Uh, but anyway, hope everybody's doing well. I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Digital gram makes no sense. Mm -hmm.